you could change one thing about the medical practice now what would that be call system i will cancel calls like forever like everybody should work eight to five like if yeah, of course there will be people that yeah, will do yeah. night shift yeah. so if it's only day or night so, work so hours, nobody should work related. nobody should work 24 hours like that's it's that's absurd that's it's absurd like it's a vestige of 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 pre-colonial eras like it should not be happening in the 21st century not to talk of people working 48 72 hours is, is terrible i'll change it Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Sir? Fine, thank you. And please, can you kindly introduce yourself? Okay, I'm Madiba Anjo Isaac. Okay, and what's your specialty of residency training? Obstetrics and gynecology. So, um, that happens to be, I think, one of the areas that young people are keen on taking the pathway of residency into. Just today, I was having a conversation with someone over in Port Harcourt, within Nigeria here, and how half of the class seemed to want to go into ONG. Now, I shared in his perspective, because as a student, the posting was very appealing to me. Yeah. But unfortunately, coming to house job, seeing how busy and stressful it was, I was like, I don't think this is something I want to do. So we we'll just want to ask you some questions, as someone who has been within that field for a while to get an insight into what the specialty is like overall. Right. Okay. So, um, where did you do your undergraduate training first of all? I schooled at Afeba Valla University, that's an Adui Kitsi. What specialty did you think you would go into right from medical school? Okay, well, um, medical school, that was where I actually got the motivation to do ONG from, kind of. So. Um, I was kind of really good in ONG in school. So my nickname in, um, in university was Father O'Driscoll. <laughs> now, uh, Father O'Driscoll is someone who pioneered active management of labor. He's a Scottish yeah. guy like that. So um, I was called Father O'Driscoll. Now, um, unfortunately, for some reasons, like, um, you know, as uh, some guys like me in um, university, they're very lackadaisical and then. Um, we don't uh, um, sign attendance, sign all this stuff. So I had to receipt ONG. So in medical school, ONG that ironically I, I was was my best subject was the only course I had the receipt in, in medical school. And so um, it kind of motivated me like, okay, um, I want to prove to anybody. And I had a chip on my shoulder. That I wanted to prove that ah, no, yeah, I know, I know ONG, forget. So um, of course I passed the receipt and then continued with school and then came to house job uh, unlike you i i really enjoyed um house job in ong because i guess not just the, the senior colleagues they were amazing yeah sure and then sure, the colleagues my fellow house officers that i worked in it made, it and that is, it made it so interesting all of us were like-minded and like we just worked in sync so the stress was not really there Everybody knew what to, to do part time per season, and we just got all the work done, and it was very nice. I enjoyed the adrenaline. And so, um, how long does the training going. to become a specialist in this field take post medical school? Okay. So, um, the residency training in itself for West African College is at least six years. For National College, it used to it used to be possible to do it within five years but of recent the trend is also tending to become that uh, that way west africa does it, which is six years because you know how it goes three years of um pre part one and then um three years post part one yeah is the specialty competitive and how should prospective residents hope to deal with that competitive in the sense of in terms of the number of people trying to come in to the specialty and also perhaps um job demand wise okay. and competing for spaces maybe for locum and all that within the environment okay so um for residency ONG is actually one of the residency um residency trainings that you will easily get the spot in you get because you know no matter how 
much and how they want to do it they will need new residents in ONG. there are all those in quote quote unquote chill specialties family medicine community medicine most hospitals in nigeria don't really staff them as much because they feel like they are not doing much and then there's no like um there's no review on all those all those departments understand because they, have, they are not they don't have mortalities and all of that so there's no limelight that is on those departments so hospitals can afford to underfund these departments but departments like uh, ong medicine um surgery pediatrics they always be of high demand so those are the ones that is easiest to get a residency placement for you understand uh, so I, I guess that answers the question what makes O and G unique amongst all other specialties? Okay. Um, I think it will be the obstetric part because the gynecology part may not be so um, unique, but the obstetric part of it makes it very unique. The fact that like you are dealing with two lives, and then um, you get to see the changes that occur from the woman from conception up to delivery, and then just shortly after delivery and then um, there's a certain maybe re a joy that comes with seeing the um, relief the excitement on people's faces when there's like a new face coming into the world everybody's like oh is this thing and then the relatives are happy the husband is happy the wife is happy mother is happy everybody's happy and so when you can pull that through and then even in in cases where the, um, there's emergencies and all of that and patients coming bad and then you're able to save the life of the mother, save the life of the baby. It's always like there's a battle, but when you win the battle, it's always very yes, rewarding. very exciting and rewarding. If there are one or two reasons why someone should choose this specialty, what would it be? The first reason, yeah, I think we've said that already, it's easy to get the residency. The actual main reason, number two, um, all surgical specialties the primaries that's the exam you write to enter this the residency training the primaries the primaries is cheaper than medical specialties so surgery um ophthalmology ent ong surgical specialties the primary fees is cheaper than medical specialty medicine community medicine pediatrics and the like that's number two so it's cheaper to write the primaries so almost half half the cost of um, the primary because when I, I wrote my own primaries, primaries for ONG was 75,000, that was national, uh, national college, and then the prim the national college for medicine was 150,000, so that is double the price, so it's cheaper to get into. Then, um, ONG is simple, it's the simplest, I, I think, it's the simplest specialty. Like, even um, everybody that has done house job with you. Be able yeah. to tell you, you after a while you yourself you start feeling like you can even be a consultant yeah. in ONG because like it's, it's it's really simple it's just one part of the human body pelvis and perineum basically and then how it links to the other parts of the body so the anatomy physiology and all of that of ONG is quite simple it's very easy to pass understand and then the skills too are easy to acquire it's not neurosurgery that's you know, before you even start doing all these complicated procedures, you have to be a senior senior registrar. But uh, you know, as a registrar, you gain a lot of you gain a lot of skills that you can be commercialized in the streets. Then, um, ONG skills are also. Uh, so I said the last line to get into this. ONG skills are easily commercialized in the streets. You understand? Because let's say you can do a cesarean section. There will always be private hospitals here and there that want to do cesarean section. You can do a, 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 a what they call it. You can do a laparotomy for um, um, ectopic pregnancy. You can always get jobs outside here and just use that to augment the salary. And then um, advantages. Yeah, I said the joy that comes with seeing the baby. And then you know the relatives always want to reward you one way or the other. Before you know, they are always trying to squeeze some yeah. cheese into your vocal because you know like. If somebody has a surgery, nobody really cares. They are still afraid that ah, this person is going to survive. But in ONG, if you, once, you don't even some most of them don't even have surgeries. You just conduct delivery, and the work is actually done 
most of the time by the mother. Yeah, I just there to watch oh, the whole process. Out. But at the end, when the, the baby comes out, they still want to squeeze some change into your hand and all of that. So everybody's happy there. Is that? Is there any reason why someone should not choose the special? Mm, yes. If you don't have um, the spirit of audience, I don't think ONG is for you. Like, if you are the kind of person that doesn't like working under pressure, ONG is not for you because there's going to be a lot of pressure. Some labor can just be going well and then boom, there's blood everywhere. There's, there's hemorrhage. I just have to start everybody shouting, everybody, everybody shouting, bring this, bring that, bring this, bring that. And within five minutes, the whole world's upside down. So you need to be able to work under pressure. If you can't work under pressure, ONG is not for you. Also, um, well, I don't know whether to say this or not, but um, if you value a lot of time within the residency training, meaning that you want to have a lot of time to yourself, then ONG is not likely going to be for you because Apart from the medical aspect of ONG, there's the surgical aspect of it, and then there's the academic aspect of it too. So a lot of time, you have to sacrifice time with your loved ones. You know, it's not like you're not you're not going to see them at all. But compared to other specialties, you are not going to have a lot of time on your hands as such. Are there any stereotypes of the specialty? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> the one percent. Yes, you know, uh, people always yeah. think that um, it's people that like women, like guys, especially for it's a male dominated field yeah. for the reasons I've spoken above. Women don't usually flock into specialties that demand their time. You understand? And like put pressure on them. So it's a male dominated specialty. And so there's this um, stigma that goes like, okay, or oh, misconception that like, person likes women that's why i didn't mind yeah <laughs> it's not necessarily yeah. correct i don't think the average ong doctor is more promiscuous than a male doctor is more promiscuous than the community medicine resident for example you understand okay what's the daily routine like in a summary clinic surgeries theaters does it just revolve as clinic ward runs theater, does it just revolve around those three or they are extra? Okay, um, that's the, cl the clinical aspect of it. There's um, clinics, there are ward rounds, yes. and then there are surgeries. I know the surgeries come in two ways. You can have emergency surgeries and then you can have elective or planned surgeries. So the emergency surgeries can come anytime, any day. And th you don't even have to be on call. Because once a patient is under your care, they can develop emergencies anytime. And if it's not copyright, you know how it works here. You can't really hand it over to the team because you have to deal with your emergencies yourself. Um, so that's the clinical aspect. But there's also the academic aspect. In obstetrics and gynecology, most places hold daily morning, morning meetings or review, depending on how it's called, where they review the clinical um, cases that we handle during the call hours and then there are usually academic sessions um, and in ONG is usually more frequent than in other specialties so um, majority of the ONG specialties hold um, academic sessions three four five times a week so it means that after you're done with work for the day instead of going home you have to stay back for academic sessions and this so you know you're already exhausted from work and you still have academic session you have to present you have to listen to lectures you have to do all of that yeah so that's how a typical day goes what's the craziest case you've ever been a part of <laughs> okay <laughs> i guess um that would be um it was a case that um the woman had um, three previous cesarean sections and then she wanted like a bilateral tubal ligation and then there was like really lots of additions yeah and so we're doing additionalizes additionalize we're just opening the anterior abdominal and trying to do 
additionalizes to even have access to the pelvis to be able to see the uterus and bring out baby and then bring out the uterus and do the ligation and while we were still in additionalizes the next thing we saw the baby's head and it was like really crazy because like where we've not even gotten to the muzzle layer yet and this was the baby and so it was really crazy because like inadvertently we had incised into the uterus without even knowing and so like we really had to bring out the baby eventually we couldn't do the bilateral to bilateral war because of the old addition so we didn't want to cause trouble and all of that so it was really um interesting another interesting case was um a lady that had some infertility for a couple of years she had been infertile and then um she was she had she was pregnant while younger about 10 years before she just got married and she was within the reproductive age her hormonal profile was normal there was no other apparent reason for the um, infertility apart from the um, um, HSG that was showing a lining in the endometrium and so it looked very weird until when we were doing hysteroscopy and then we now found out that she had she had some fetal bones from her last pregnancy so the last time she was pregnant she was um, over 10 15 years ago she was pregnant as a teenager she had a a um, an abortion done and there were some bones that were not evacuated so those bones were now acting as a form of iucd within the uterus yeah. and were preventing her from getting pregnant afterwards so when we saw the bones it was really like wow how many hours do you work on average in a week <laughs> that actually depends from weeks to week but okay on an average you know the average person works eight hours five days a week which translates to 40 hours a week so um we usually have in my center we usually have about two to three calls a week so if we're having two calls a week already that's 48 hours the two calls is already 48 hours which is more than the normal <laughs> weekly average for what you get so yeah. yeah 48 hours then the remaining um 72 hours or as the case may um, be 72 plus you get so we work about 100 and 810 hours a week that's a lot yes that's a lot of hours is it a financially rewarding specialty equivalent to the stress that it comes with? Okay. Um, yes. Orange is like an oil well and it's really untapped in so many in so many senses. So of course in re residence is not rewarding. Uh, I'll be honest, like the pay of residence is not really the best it could be and so the stress in residence is not commensurate to what you are being paid but it helps to see residence as a school especially since it's limited you're just doing six years it's about the same time you spent in medical school so he, he helps to see it as if you're in this school and then you are getting the bonus of being paid or well, that's your pocket money from your parents if you want your salary is like a pokemon you'll be in school and be learning and that's your pokemon yeah. so when you now get out of residence and you're now a fellow you're now a consultant in ong then you can make all the money you want if you've acquired all the skills that that you need there's so many branches of ong that are very very lucrative for example um euro gyne, euro gyne. Uh, there are very few euro gynecologists in Nigeria, very few. I don't think they are up to 20 in the whole of Nigeria. So if you're a urogynecologist, your services are going to be in like crazy demand. You are going to make millions monthly because everybody wants a piece of you. If you're a fertility specialist, you're going to make a lot of money because there's one thing that always that women always they always need to get pregnant. You're going to make like a lot of money. Then um Yes, it is still upcoming. It's a field that is coming up. Um, this maternal fetal 
special. It's not like it's open, but the part of extremely pretend having specialized maternal fetal centers that are dealing with like um, extreme um, preterm pregnancies and how to um, bring them up or deliver them ahead of time and then collaborate with this. Thing. So that's also coming up, understand. And then also in the aspect of all the even oncology, the oncological part of um, ONG, dealing with all the cancers um, and then the other tumors of the gynecology, other gynecological tumors. There's also a lot of money to, that is in that. I don't want to say to be made because you know it's like yeah. a, it's a misfortunate situation, unfortunate yeah. situation rather. So well, you know you, you if you if you you've de you've been dealing with chemotherapy, radiotherapy, you know how expensive, expensive those yeah. things are. So imagine having a a um, gynecological oncological center if you if you can establish it for yourself. There are not many chemotherapy and um, radiotherapy um, centers in Nigeria. You understand there are not many places that even offer as little as chemotherapy. So you understand so if you have those kind of things, people always look for you because in Nigeria unfortunately the diagnosis of these cancers is usually late. And so they are, they are always looking for somebody that is a specialist that can quickly help them avoid dying or prolong their life as much as possible. There's a lot of money a lot of money you know and you, but of course during residency if your mind is to if your mind is geared on making money immediately then you may not make as much money as you think you would during residency especially in ONG because you won't even have enough time to do like work in other places you would get some but not it's not going to you won't have a lot of time on your hands to dabble into private practice if not ONG for you, what else would it be? I think I will have done internal medicine. Okay. I'll have done internal medicine. I personally I like stuff. I I, yeah. I, don't know, I like stuff. <laughs> I don't know like, like stuff excites me when stuff is being moved. In fact in ONG, I like I like when when ONG are moved. That's the reason yeah, why I I, I, I I liked ONG. The fact that ONG has like surgical aspects. We yeah. also have stuff. stuff yes. Understand? Yeah. So I like stuff. So it's only internal medicine that will give me that kind of Flip. that kind of joy, that stuff. But of course, not internal medicine in Nigeria is is under underdeveloped. Let me put it that way. There's no advanced anything. So there's a lot of bad outcomes. I don't like that. If you could change one thing about the medical practice now, what would that be? Call system. I will cancel calls like forever. Like everybody should work eight to five. Like if, yeah, of course, there will be people that yeah, will do yeah. night shift. Yeah. So if it's only day or night, so, so hours, nobody should work. Related. Nobody should work twenty four hours. Like it's absurd. It it's absurd. Like it's a vestige of, of, of pre-colonial -pre eras. Like it should not be happening in the twenty first century. Not to talk of people working forty eight seventy two hours. It's, it's terrible. It's I will change it. If, what would you say to the aspiring O and D residents? Right. Enjoy. There's a lot of there's there's a lot of fun to be had. Yes, and then um, in O and G, uh, you just have to have like a, a thick skin. You understand because people are going to yab you, they insult you, they always like to put pressure on, on you and all of that. So don't be taking things personal. Like when you're when the senior colleagues are trying to insult your level of skills or your level of stuff, just take it, take it with a pinch of salt. Day to the new have stuff. Nobody stuff is not congenital. Everything skills too are not congenital. They are all acquired one way or the other. So don't at some point you too you'll be the one that has all of these skills you get. And then so just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Always find a way to enjoy it. If it's music, if it's just enjoy it. That is it. Don't don't forget why you are in residence. In residence, it's very easy to forget why you came into residence in the first place. What some people believe that work-life balance during residence is like a myth. Maybe it's not possible. But what's your take on that? What measures perhaps can aspiring residents have at the top of their mind ahead of time? Okay. 
if you are in a quote unquote again busy specialty like Wanji. Go home. Go home. Just go home. Don't you know some a lot of people, especially when they start getting one G skills, they're always in one place or the other, in one workshop or the other. They are trying to make money here, trying to make money here, make money. Just go home. Go home. Stay with your wife. Stay with your children. Enjoy. Let them at least be able to see you. Of course, money is good, and we know that the economic situation of the country is very funny, but prioritize your free time. Yeah, prioritize your family, your free time. Prioritize your friends, even if you are not married or you don't have any family living around you. Prioritize your friends, prioritize your connections. You'll be, it's those connections that actually really matter when the like chips are down. You understand? None of the places you are working in, you are going to hustle for money. So no hustle. You're already getting your skills. Once you've gotten your skills, you're not a consultant. You can maximize the money that you want to make and also choose your own schedule but don't put the cut before the rest don't start chasing a lot of money you are not seeing your family if you if you wreck your relationships with your family your friends at the end of the day you have the money your friends too will have the money your family too will have the money but then you will not be able to get back what you lost so if you are busy once you are off go home on average how long do surgeries in this special to last you no, know, one G surgeries are not long, you know, they're not long. One G surgeries are, are chill. On an average, the average cesarean section, one hour. Yeah, one hour should be done. And that is the most common surgery. The average my neck to me should be about two hours, thereabout. So one G surgeries are not long. So the longest one G surgeries, those um, urological, urogynecological surgeries, about four there about five hours um, or uh, yes all those at manchester for jail operations and all of that those are the complex ones four five hours or one and so just on the whole they are usually not long how has training to be a specialist in this field changed you so far okay <laughs> well it may be more like outspoken and then understand women more understand uh, um when, when you're coming in because um women go through a lot in pregnancy and and whatnot so you see them in their vulnerable states and then that also helped me relate with women that i'm not even my patients better because i now understand like the things that they go through from the social perspective in terms of their husbands wanting more children or wanting children in the first place, the how to balance their their health, their marriage, their career, and all of that. So, being around managing and treating women predominantly has helped me understand the female psychology more. And now, I I make friends easily with my patients. I'm more friendly. Let me not say make friends. I'm more friendly with my patients now than when I started residence or before I started residence. Do you have any regrets? Um, that's choosing one G. Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> not really. Uh, there are some times that I'm like really stressed, like, oh God, God. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. I think that like, happens like, to everybody. Like, uh, why, why, why? Like, you, you know, like some nights that you are call and then it was for, as you are coming out of the theater, you are going back and you call going back to like oh yeah you have like a terrible ball and you are literally <laughs> dozing on the women's abdomen you get that so you almost regret your life but then it's, it's generally like why am i with a doctor like people are not even yes. they are sleeping <laughs> why am i with a doctor <laughs> why, did, why did i do this nonsense because you get but all the love, i don't think like if i was given another option i would choose something else i think i was still Every choice I've made up to this point, I'll still repeat making it. making me fall in love with the special <laughs> thing. <laughs> what are the top three factors anyone should consider in choosing a special thing? Well, the first three factors, obviously, are like your vision for yourself. Yes, you get, because like, if you intend to be 
a doctor as a full time like work or discipline. You know, there are people that being a doctor is like a hobby to them. They are not really in medicine to practice medicine. It's just like, oh, I do I do medicine on the side, you get. So if that's if that's your life ambition to be a doctor, then obviously you should do residency. You get then and choose based on whatever you have envisioned for yourself. That's one. Then number two, when choosing a specialty, you should look for a, a specialty that you understand. Yeah, that you understand. So it gives you an edge. Don't pick a specialty that like you don't really understand what is going on there. Because you'll be struggling in the residency. You'll be struggling, especially with the academic part. And if you are struggling with the academic part, your confidence may tank. Your confidence tanking. Even the non-academic part, you see yourself um, burning out quicker. So always choose a specialty that at least academically you are you are comfortable with and then there are more than three actually but let me stick with three the three most important i think your plus or minus your health challenges you get or your life so it's like somebody that is like having like hypertensive or has serious health challenges can want to veer into less demanding specialties on their health Understand because you know nobody is going to give you yes they may not necessarily yeah. give you that slack that you feel they will give you the slack with, uh, during the training so you will wish you were doing something so those are the things to put in, into condition which is a specialty what exams do you take at different levels to eventually emerge as a consultant okay because go to your medical school and write your medical board exams to be a doctor. Then write your primaries in whatever college. So of course in Nigeria we have two colleges, the West African College and then the a National College. So the National College covers all specialties. For West African College, they have College of Surgeons and College of Physicians. Uh, so if you write primaries in either of the colleges or both, like in my case, I, I wrote primaries in both West Africa and National. And so after writing that, do your residency. In ONG, um, you write um, case books before you go for your part one. The case book is basically a summary of the cases that you managed. There will be some 15 obstetric cases, 15 gynecological cases. You write it, write the story, the whole clerking, the examination findings, your management, and what you did till the person delivered, or if it's a gynecology case, till the person recovered. That's and right, 15 cases, 15 cases. Then you do like two long cases. The long cases are like research. So you do research in gynecology, one in obstetrics. And usually like five, over five years, five year studies, or three years, depending on how you want to do it. So those are the things that now pre-qualify you. If the college accepts your work, then you are qualified to write your part one examination. So once you write your part one examination, of course, this one is uniform with all colleges. Whether you're a physician or this, you have to do a dissertation, proposal, and all of that. So then you write a, a on your, yes, you have a research work that you have to do, research proposal, and then you submit it to the college. You carry out your research work while being an while being a senior registrar. And then once you've carried out your research work, you submitted to the college, you've accepted, and all of that, you've been invited for your part two exams. So you can defend your right to be called the consultant. And so once you pass that, so oh yeah, there's in ONG there are also some sub specializations. And most of them are like six months. So specialization courses that you can do in uh, or six to one year, six months to one year. Euro gyne, um, but you're already a consultant. You get a general obstetrician then college. So if you now so specialize fertility, you get you can now do like six months to one year of so specialization. Have you had any challenges, maybe one, and how you overcame it? 
yes, I've had. <laughs> I got married within a few months of starting residency, so it was like really terrible because like um, I was struggling to find time to spend my. I like I like spending time with my wife. The people that know me, they yes, know that. Yes, we know. <laughs> <laughs> so I like spending time with my we wife. Know. So being apart from her all, all the time or most of the time was kind of really hard for me and like figured out how to like give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and then give to myself what belongs to me so the parts that belong to me I gave to myself me and my wife spent a lot once I'm out of here my wife I don't even want to know I don't even want, I don't care I can always switch off my phone it's only me and my wife that's all I want to the hospital, right? So that's me. What's your advice to the aspiring medical doctor? Okay. Yeah. Don't don't be straight jacketed in thinking. Medicine, this is the 21st century. Everything is no longer the same. The job field is not the same as it was before. So being a doctor is a very good platform to be anything you want to be in life. So whatever it is, just figure it out. There are more, there are more options for the doctor of today than creating. Can go into health advocacy. Can go into um, health technology. I have a classmate that builds um, health apps. So that's that's what he does. Understand? So he, he just didn't focus on clinical medicine and all of that so there are a lot of things you can do there are people that have gone into health engineering there are people that have done medicine and then decide to go to law school to go into medical law so you understand and being a doctor helps you to be a better medical lawyer you understand so there are all these things medical engineering bio biomedical engineering you understand you can do a master's in biomedical engineering begin to patent devices you get so there's a lot of money money to be made from the health sector even there are some people that all they do they are doctors all they do is they don't even they just sell they sell medical equipment yeah. that's all they do and they are ballers you understand so medicine is far is wide you can do whatever you want to do with it don't just limit your mind that like you have to be a doctor you have to be not a doctor you have to be a clinician it's not compulsory to be a clinician. Nobody's going to take your MBA certificate from you if you are not a clinician. A question just came to my mind. Now, in your opinion, there is this current, you know, Jaffa with people living in the country for greener pastures. Um, what are the two topmost factors one should consider, you know, deciding whether to do residency at home or abroad? <laughs> well, I think the you cannot talk about factors um, that decide whether to jack or not without talking about it. So yeah, that's just the main reason. Like in the ninety percent, there's nobody that's jacking because they want to practice better medicine. Okay, well, except there are very few. Most people, ninety percent of them or more. I'm being generous, but it's saying like are, are going out because of the better pay. So that's a factor to consider. Money is a factor, of course. And not work for all of that and then not be able to afford the basic necessities of life. So that's also one. Then number two, your family roots. So there are people that have a lot of family roots in Nigeria and then you also need to consider that because if you <coughs> if you go there, um, you are kind of disconnected in a sense from like your family and loved ones you understand and then for young people like us um, the family support is often an underrated thing that we not like that we, we take for granted the fact that like you can just if your parents dies if your parents are still alive your siblings are you have siblings that are alive that um, they can easily come from one state or the other to come and support you when you are doing something you have, a, you have like maybe you give birth to a child a mother can easily just come there and then help you raise up the child and all of that that support system is something that should be considered too 
but then i'm going to make a case for like reverse japa i think that everybody that goes abroad should not go abroad and become medical officers i think that that's just crazy like it's craziness so of course in the u.s it's compulsory to do residency so there's no even that is not an option but in some places saudi arabia united kingdom it's possible to be like just be a medical officer you get get into residency training pick up your skill become a fellow become something pick a skill and come back to nigeria the way the the, the gap between medicine in the western world and nigeria is far so if you have that skill and you come back to nigeria and set up something you're just oh my god you you yes you make impact on the society because you are providing a service that mm. is not available and you will make you will make crazy profits crazy profit crazy profit i remember back in the day when some guys came back to nigeria and started doing transuretral resection of prostate for example then before everybody was doing open prostatectomy in nigeria once they started doing um TURP. They were doing TURPs was high as back then or oh, over 10 years ago they were doing TURP for like 1.5 million. I don't even want to know how much yeah. <laughs> it's going to cost in present Nigeria. So uh, that's one surgery, 1.5 million. So you can imagine. So if you get such to so you stay in, the, in those countries 10 years, always stay there with the mind of coming back to Nigeria because like this Yes, like I said earlier, Nigeria has untapped medical wealth. There's untapped medical wealth that is just looking for people to make it. But you need to have something special to have. Yeah. Mm, finally, any parting words for us? Okay. <laughs> um, residency can be scary. But at the same time, I think in Nigeria, it may be tougher. It may be tougher not to be in residence. So a lot of people just, if they are, if you are not decided whether to go abroad or to stay in Nigeria, especially for the young doctors, start residency. Because I've seen a lot of cases where people were like, oh, let me just be medical officer while I'm trying to decide whether to go abroad or enter residence. But they know. 10 years post-graduation, they are still medical officers. They've not gone abroad. They're still in Nigeria and they don't have a residence. Their mates are now fellows, consultants, and all of that. And they are seeing their mates get opportunities that they are not getting. So if you are if you are not certain or you've not put a timeline into, into living in Nigeria, start residency. Find the specialty that you think suits you seek advice of people that are in that specialty and then go into residency immediately i don't think being a medical officer really? in nigeria makes sense. makes sense in fact if you don't want to if you want to be a resident if you, can, if you want to do residency in being a medical officer do family medicine <laughs> at least you'll be a resident yeah, medical officer make progress. <laughs> we're making we're making progress we do residency have that it's an added qualification that makes you makes you special like you may think the difference, like um, the difference between residency and private practice is so far apart. Like there's so many technical, technic, technical things that are done in residency training that is not done in the average hospital. Because like when we went to general hospitals for rural posting, see the way they do some things. You know that that's not how we practice. It's like the, the practice is always one, two steps ahead. So you will always be better for being a resident. Thank you very much. It's been an <laughs> utmost delight you know, to yeah. have you on the channel today. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure the viewers would enjoy watching this video. And yeah. we hope to be in touch again in the near future. Right. No problem. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Yeah.